Assalamu alaikum everyone. So the latest Pakistani chess news is that 17 year old Zaman Sohail has won the Punjab Open Chess Championship which is one of the most uh like after the nationals it one it's one of the most prestigious uh chess championships in the country and he has won it with a stellar performance of 6.5 out of 7 beating two uh, 22200s and one national master and only conceding a draw that too to only his brother So it was a stellar performance he amazed everyone and I am told that after the event he even had a game against none other than the country's top rated player Mr Mahmood Lodi whom he was about to beat in a casual blitz game but uh, lost on time I'll I'll see if the game's already available on YouTube then I'll post a link to that in the description as well and feel free to check it out Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this so yeah over here we can like look at his score uh score sheet he had a performance rating of 2019 in Pakistan which is quite phenomenal uh, you really say see that and his only draw was against his brother in round I don't know um I think 1 2 3 4 5 in round 5 and as you can see he beat fide master amir kareem which is the game we will be analyzing today so without much further ado we will begin analyzing the game let me just uh do this over here mm yeah and that's it so uh where's the yep yeah so we're ready uh Mr Amir Kareem is a lifelong D4 player and began with the move D4. Uh black replies with D5. We have C4, E6, queen's gambit declined. Knight C3, knight F6, knight F3, bishop E7, bishop G5. It's a pretty typical setup you'd expect from both players. Uh castles E3 and H6. Uh instead of H6, uh black still has the option of transposing with moves like B D seven, Rook C one, C six, and we enter into a sort of a semi slav position with sort of a semi slav position with ideas of breaking over here and it playing H six in the future. But okay, we had the move H six, Bishop H four, Knight B D seven now, and a trade in the center before uh, White can before Black can push right. So we have C captures D five. Knight captures d5. The knight captures d5 is an interesting choice, really, because um, what I know is that you don't want to trade off this bishop. But what I saw with after e captures d5, bishop d3, c6, queen c2, and you aren't really creating that many problems for White, right? Uh, he is uh, doing all that which he wants to be doing, and um, you will be most probably wasting some temp uh, tempo right so in hindsight i really like his idea of taking with the knight we have bishop captures e7 interesting to note sorry about that or oh, that's a bit of a spoiler right <laughs> so pretend you guys didn't see that so knight captures d5 bishop captures e7 interesting to note that over here if Knight captures d5 was played. Bishop captures h5. Knight captures h4. E captures d4. Knight f3. Knight f6. And queen c2. Uh, white black would be doing extremely well over here. Um, you have a strong knight over here. Okay, number one. You'd bring your bishop out here. Play c uh, play c6, and probably give a check over here in the, on. A five in some lines, and you'd be practically winning. So interesting to note that this does not work. So bishop captures e seven, knight captures e seven, and bishop d three, with ideas of now controlling the center through uh, b six and bishop to b seven, because you really want to control these two central squares. 
So c5 an excellent break within the position seeing as now it being the only way to strike in the center really and one of the most logical moves castles c captures d4 e captures d4 and we enter into this isolated queen's pawn position which would uh, i believe favor black a little bit seeing as though there aren't as many pieces as white would like but still three minor pieces and both rooks are on the board and if black is not careful white can get a strong attack so b6 obviously you want to stop the spawn push and want to control these light squares therefore uh, fiancat wing the light squared bishop is essential rook e1 bishop b7 rook c1 Standard ideas in isolated queen's pawn positions. Knight f6. Again controlling. Knight e5. Placing a strong piece on the e5 square. White will also be, black will also be placing a strong piece over here. Knight e d5 as I said. Rook goes back to b1. Rook c8. Queen d3, a blunder. So, why is this a blunder? Because of the move. Knight f4, simple. You fork two pieces. g3, and Zaman actually had the dusty to snap off a pawn from Fide Max Ramir Kareem. So, kudos to him. Uh, he snapped off that pawn without a moment of hesitation. I was there. I can confirm. E captures uh, D1 was played. Instead, um, there is this interesting variation that I believe could have offered some chances. Which starts off with knight captures E7. And now if uh, king captures F7, which I don't know why you, anyone would play that. We have G6, king G8. Rook captures e6, queen captures d4, and uh, position is somewhat unclear. And there are a lot of practical chances within this game. If king and of uh, rook captures f7, simply rook captures e6, knight captures uh, queen captures d4, queen uh, rook d6, queen g4, bishop g7, rook e7, and still practicalities to exist within this position but instead uh, we had uh, the move silent move rook e d1 queen h knight h5 attacking the queen queen goes back to d3 and we have g6 stopping mate interesting to note had f5 been played we would have had the instant d5 knight would have to go back to f4 queen f3 queen g6 King h1, knight captures d5 would have been played, and knight captures d5, queen captures over here, and the game would have continued. With obviously winning for, you know, white, black, sorry. So, we have knight captures g6. After g6, uh, this does allow knight capture g6 and a very important move which has to be played now, which is queen g5. Uh, you cannot take this piece because of f capture g6, queen capture g6, g7, h7 check, f7, g6, king f6, and bishop e4. And white is simply doing much better than he was before. So instead uh, we have knight d7 and you simply move your king up to king g7, king goes back to f1, gf3, h7 check, king goes up and over here white makes the fatal error of taking the bishop. Instead uh, this move could have been played allowing for a swift uh, I mean black is still lost white is still lost but uh, okay the game could have continued 
after this move uh, the, it's just a brutal brutal attack on the board absolutely if i do say so myself humiliating uh only move is to give the piece and now it's just so satisfying to watch all the pieces come together right no tactical there's no tactical motive there is no positional thinking just making national moves right giving checks taking pieces winning a lot of material and over here zaman so shows some expertise by playing the most accurate moves as you see he doesn't just chop off the uh, board uh, he doesn't just ch chop off the free rook he gives a check and now he allows one final desperate attempt of checks and there's nothing black can do i mean look at his king look at his king over there but still okay and it was i think somewhere around here that he resigned the game after this move absolutely beautiful move take over here and king and mate is coming in the next move so yeah this was the game congratulations uh, to zaman for winning his first ever tournament and that too with such great style uh, hope to see you guys again in the next video uh, allah hafiz and if you guys do have any other game or any other prominent chess personalities whose game from pakistan obviously whose game you'd like me to analyze uh, feel free to comment yeah